All right, change, are you ready for the word of God? Are you ready for his word to come alive in your spirit? Come on, can you make some noise right now if you're ready for the word of God? Man, we're in a series called Change Makers, and I'm so excited to come to you virtually today. Me and my family were in the West Coast. My cousin's getting married, so we're taking some time. And uh, thank you so much to the team. I just want to honor those that have picked up the baton these weeks and just are plowing. Thank you, Sean, leading us into worship. Thanks for ministering, letting that spirit of God fill the place. Thank you, team, creative team, guest team. Thanks for everybody for setting up, opening the place. Man, thank you. We appreciate this incredible team. In fact, can you just make some noise for the incredible dream team that makes it happen here at Change? Come on. Yes, the Change Makers. Way to go. Way to go. I'm excited to dive into the Word today. I've entitled today, and can you help me with the title? I've called it Risk, the Comfort Zone of a Change Maker. Come on, help me out. Say Risk, the Comfort Zone of a Change Maker. You see, as a change maker, your comfort zone, the place that you feel most natural in, becomes the comfort zone and natural place of the one you're following. We as change makers, we are following God. And I believe that I'm talking to some change makers today. I know that there's people in this church, you're sitting there and God is tapping on your shoulder. God is bringing you into a space that may feel uncertain, may feel undoubtedly a little scary, but you are making that step. And so I wanna congratulate those that are stepping out, dreaming big, coming alive to their purpose. But today I know that this word, this word is gonna motivate you to take that next step of faith. Take that step into the risk. Man, we just heard of Leticia's story. Here's a girl that moved from Brazil all the way to America, came into a whole new environment, looking for community, looking for uh, an experience of the American culture. What a step of faith. I mean, what a step and a leap into something that is way unknown had to learn a different language, had to take on a new culture, had to really find herself and her identity in God. I love talking with Leticia because you see the strength and the boldness that has been built because of her journey. And being in America, especially during the pandemic and this crazy year that we've had in 2020 and now into 2021, that this year has been a year where you have to be secure in your faith. You can't be dependent on things. You have to be dependent on a person. And so we've seen this in Leticia's life, but I believe that that same boldness and faith is going to fill you today, that this word is going to get in your spirit and you're going to come alive to what God wants you to do. Hey, there are some of us that are settling. We're settling into a complacent life, not dreaming God-sized dreams, not pushing the limits, but I believe today, and if you're ready, Come on, help me out with this word because I believe that God is going to revitalize, rejuvenate, restore that God-given urgency and fire in you that risk becomes your natural. Are you ready to take a risk? What risk is God calling you to take? What step of faith is God calling you to step up into? That you've been settling out of place, but God is drawing you deeper. Come on, I'm ready. The space of risk becomes something that feels natural. Are you living a safe Christian life? You gotta ask yourself that question because a life with Jesus is anything but safe. And if you are living a safe life, you might not be following Jesus. (laughs) You might be a part of his church. You might even call yourself a Christian. But if you don't look like Christ, you're not taking risk, then you might not be following Jesus. You might be serving him from a distance. You might have come into this relationship with him, but if you are leaning in, you'll understand that Jesus is drawing you into a zone and the zone is called risk. Faith is spelled R-I-S-K, risk. In fact, Paul puts it out and he says that faith, if left alone, just as a belief system, just as a doctrine, just as something you show up on the weekends. Come on, if faith is left there, where all it is is you showing up in church and doing your due diligence of just making sure that you're 
in a seat in church. If that is the nth degree, then faith, Paul calls it dead. And I believe that God wants to breathe life into you as a Christ follower, that you come alive to the church of Acts where they were finding themselves in a place of power. See, the walk of God is a walk of motion and forceful advancement. When we see John the Baptist who came into the wilderness to proclaim that Jesus was coming, he was preparing the way. He wasn't sitting and waiting. He was preparing people for the king. And this is a season where God is preparing his church. He's preparing you. He's preparing me to dream bigger, to have more faith, to take more risk. Because we, we talked about last week that the miracle is in the motion. And so when you move, that's when the miracle takes place. But I believe some of us, we've fallen asleep to risk. We don't want to risk too much. It's, it's too risky. The definition of risk is chance of loss, chance of danger, chance of the unknown, something being lost. And think of how many of us, we live with that fear of loss. And so we stay safe. I mean, our whole life is just safe. And God never called us to be safe. He never called us to a life where we are comfortable, a life where we are just staying put. In fact, whenever I do feel comfortable, you know, that's when I know I need to dive deeper into God's word. I need to dive deeper into his voice because I know that the, the moment I get safe is the moment I've stopped leaning in. The moment I've gotten comfortable is the, the moment I've stopped dreaming God-sized dreams. The moment I'm not living on the edge of my seat with adventure in my spirit is the moment I know I've lost the fire. And so it's time to lean in. And if you find yourself there today, or maybe you feel, you know, a little out of sync with the Holy Spirit, you feel a little uh, deplaced from your calling and, and that urgency in your spirit, you feel like you don't have a God-sized dream that's pushing you out of your comfort zone, something that's pushing you further than you've ever been, then today is your day. I wanna read Matthew chapter 13 to start us off. And we're gonna look at verse 44. If you turn with me in your Bibles, light it up on your phone, so, or those of you who have the Bible, pull it out. We got Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. And this is, it says, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Oh man, this is the value of what it looks like to have purpose in your life. That's why we motivate everybody and we put it on a a pedestal for our church that we want purpose. You have to have purpose. When you come to Christ, he gives you purpose. With his disciples, when he left, he didn't just leave and say, figure it out. He said, no, here's the commandment. I put purpose on your life. Go and make disciples. Do something with your life. Make something with your life. Create, design, be a part of the movement of God. The kingdom of heaven is in possession of the forceful ones, the ones who have fire in their eyes, the ones who are dreaming God-sized dreams, the ones who are plowing the ground. And I wonder what God wants you to dream, to sell everything for, to throw in everything and say, I just want his treasure of having purpose in my life. And risk is this scary place where purpose becomes real. It's where the dreams and the desires of your heart, where you want to serve God, you want to see him move, become a reality for you. I remember growing up, I loved Michael Jordan. He was my all-time hero. I wanted to be Jordan. You know, I practiced the tongue out, the leg spread, slam dunk. And at the time I could only slam dunk with a tennis ball, but it was enough for me to feel like I was Jordan. In fact, one time I even contemplated and asked my parents if I could shave my head because I wanted to be Jordan. And they talked me out of it really quickly. I'm glad because I think I have an oddly shaped head. So I'm pushing that day off for a while. But I, everything revolved around Jordan. And I, I 
I traded basketball cards and I would, I would go, we would travel full time uh, as kids and we were evangelists, we were on the road. And so every church that we would go on the weekends and we'd minister there, we would meet the pastor's kid or the youth group and we would trade basketball cards and baseball cards. I'd always find the kid that was into cards. Like, hey, what do you got? What do you got? And if I ever found out that they had a Michael Jordan card, forget about it. I'm like, what do you want? <laughs> I open up my entire collection. I'm like, take anything. I just want Jordan. And in fact, I actually got to the point where I had to get my own book where I had all the pages Jordan cards because I just loved it so much. It was so valuable to me. You know what value is? Value is what a person is willing to pay for, right? It has nothing to do with the actual value of something, it's only worth what someone is willing to pay for. And that's why you're so valuable. That's why the purpose on your life is so valuable because Jesus paid the ultimate price for you to be free to take risk, to step into the life of purpose. That's why it's just so crucial is that we get a value on God. See, if you're living with reality of the world and you're living with the end result of your life is gonna be that you retire and your kids are safe and that you come to the end of your life and you've worked a good job and you've done all these things, if that is the nth degree of your life and that is all you're living for, then that purpose will fade along with your life. As soon as you die and you go to a place of eternity, you will number one answer for everything you did. But also I believe the Bible says that Jesus actually has the fire of God up there that will burn away and it will show what your crown is made of. Is it made of jewels or is it made of dust? You will find out that day what treasure you stored in heaven. And I believe with all my heart that God wants to give you a treasure that's eternal. He wants to give you a perspective to see that his kingdom is legit. His kingdom is factual. See, whatever is fact becomes our focus, right? Whatever we believe to be fact in our life becomes our reality, becomes what we step into every day, what we pursue. So if, if fact is that you are living for God in eternity, then everything out of your life is for that reason. It's to make sure people know him because you know that someday you're gonna stand before him, you're gonna place your crown down, the fire's gonna burn it, and whatever you stored on earth is gonna come out in that moment. And nothing that we built here on earth will matter. All that will matter is the purpose that we put forward, the risk that we took in order to step into what God has for us. You will be more alive than ever before when you catch the purpose of God on your life. Now, what is purpose? It's the essence of life. Your purpose makes you wake up in the morning. It gets you excited about things. It has you driving further than you would ever drive or anybody else around you would drive. You work more hours than anybody. You, you stay up later than anybody. You wake up earlier because of purpose. Purpose gets you out of bed. Purpose gets you dressed. Purpose gets you to work out in the gym. Purpose gets you to pursue and plan and strategize. That's what purpose does. And, and I, th I believe that we're called to do four things with, with what God has placed on our life. And I wanna encourage you to get these in your spirit today. Number one is to guard, to guard the purpose. I believe that God is calling us into a place of risk where we, we have this undeniable, undeniable urgency in our spirit to risk to take that risk with Holy Spirit. And that's where you move from being a, a distance bench sitter to become a partner with Holy Spirit. And maybe you find yourself on the bench today. Maybe you've been on the bench for a very long time. In fact, you don't even know what it feels like to step out onto the court, you know? You don't know what it feels like to take that leap of faith and feel like, wow, if God doesn't show up right now, I, I'm gonna look like a fool. But I believe that God is calling us into that place to that place of having total trust in Him. So number one, guard, guard your calling by keeping it in front of you. How do you guard it? You write it down, you journal it, you pray over it constantly. You keep it in front of you so that it becomes the essence of your life. I remember growing up, I had this sheet that I wrote out and I wanted to be a leader. Now at the time, I didn't feel like a leader. I was very insecure and thought too much about what other people thought about me. And thinking about being out front and leading the charge was just like, whoa. I was like, 
uh, uh, that's not my place. But God really put it in my spirit that I'm a leader. So I remember writing out this declaration that I'm a leader. I am not a follower. I set the bar. I set the stage. I set the atmosphere in the room. When I walk in, I lead people somewhere. My life will be an example. I mean, just all these things I declared. And I remember just as a young man, just reading that every day. I just read it to myself. I am a leader. I'm a leader. What was I doing? I was declaring that I'm a change maker. I am one who God calls me. Not what the world calls me, not even what I feel. Because if you go off of your feelings, you will sit on the bench of Christianity forever, my friend. This church has big visions, big dreams. We're taking over the city. We're taking every neighborhood for Jesus Christ. We're, we're not staying here, y'all. This vision is way bigger than us. But some of you, you might be sitting on the bench of this vision and you're just coming to church, you're playing the game, you're just going out through the motions of Christianity. I'm telling you, there's so much more that God wants for your life. And today, you can take that risk. You can step out and say, God, what do you want? What do you want? And you'll find out real quick. He wants you to partner with Holy Spirit because Holy Spirit is the power that he invested on the earth. He said, you have the authority that I had from my father and I pass it on to you. And now you are the one to bring it in to the world. So number one, guard, guard your purpose. Number two, cultivate, cultivate. Now in the farming terms, cultivate is to break up the soil and get it ready for seed. It's, it's the place where you're going to plant what you have in your hand. Now, some of us, we're, we're looking at our life, we're looking at our vision, and maybe the seeds in your hand don't look like much but it's in the place of cultivation that you get the ground ready because the ground is so important for your growth. The ground that you cultivate. So how do we cultivate? How do we, how do we cultivate the ground? You know, we work at it. We work at it every day. We work at the little deposits that we can do, the little things that we can do to prepare, the little things that we can do to, to wake up, to, to read to stand in the word of God, to learn this thing, to not just read it, but digest it by saying, all right, God, what are you saying with this? How do you cultivate the soil so that when the seeds come in, they are ready? Cultivating is that breaking of the ground. It's the first step. It's the decision to say, I will make a step. I will take a risk. I will this week look for someone to pray for. I will lean into Holy Spirit and obey what he says. That's the cultivation. It's just deciding, hey, I will step in. So number one, guard the purpose. Number two, cultivate. And number three, plant, plant. The deposits, the deposits, these are the actions you take. So once you make that decision to say, I want to risk, I want to step into purpose, I believe that God's going to open up opportunities. As soon as you say, Lord, search me, Lord, uh, teach me, Lord, lead me, those are dangerous prayers and he starts to open up opportunities for you. All of a sudden you realize, wow, I'm around people that he wants me to deposit his love. I'm around those that are hurting and broken that need a change. And so then you realize, wow, I'm the change maker. I already prayed for this. I have the authority. So now I have to plant, plant. This is a huge part of the process. And this is the scariest part because making the decision to risk, making the decision to follow Christ, that's the easy part. The easy part when we get inspired and we're in the moment, yes, Lord, yes, yes in advance. You know, we're making all these declarations. You are the God of all and I will follow you to the ends of the earth. But then when you get in the moment, that's when the rubber meets the road. That's when you take that step in the uncharted territories. That's where you buy the plane ticket to move to America, right? But planting is depositing the actions. It's taking the decision and moving it into the choice. It's obeying. It's stepping in, risking, doing something that may cause you to fear and be, be scared for the moment, but it's taking a leap of faith into the uncharted territory where God wants you to walk on water. Are you ready for that? It's planting, planting, planting. So we got guarding the purpose. We're going to cultivate the soil, make that decision to say, I will do this. I will break up from my selfish desires and come into a selfless life where I want to serve and risk. And then we plant, we make the choice. And this is a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday thing. This is every day when you're at work 
Every day when you're at home, every day when you're walking down the street, every day when you go to the store, you make a decision. Will I take that step of risk? Will I step into the faith gap where God has to show up, where I ask hard questions, where I just love on somebody and say, hey, how you doing today? Can I pray for you? Can I bless you today? And you release what God has in you. It's simple. And sometimes we overcomplicate it. We make it this whole, you know, you have to know the doctrine. You have to know all these things in order to reach out. You really don't. You just need the love of Christ in you. That's why it's so important that you get up, you get Christ in you, and then you release it every day. You release who he is. All right, you ready for the fourth thing? So we have guard, cultivate, plant, and then the last one is reap. To reap to reap. And this is to gain the outpouring and the reward of what you've done. This is after the seeds are planted, what you reap is the harvest. It's the the thing that comes out of your choice. And see, this is the beautiful thing because this phase only comes after the risk. The reward of joy, the reward of the peace you have, the reward of the fulfillment that you are doing the plans of God, that you are living for the right reason, you're living for the ultimate, is is the reward that comes after the choice to step out. It comes after the obedience when you move, when you love on somebody, you walk away and you're like, wow, I'm so full. I remember with our group when we were on the streets together and after we'd have an experience with somebody and we'd encounter somebody, we'd be praying for them and the tears would be flowing and that moment was so beautiful that God was investing his heart in them through us. And I remember just walking away and having those conversations together saying, wow, I feel like I'm on cloud nine. I feel like I could do this all day long. Like it was such a filling in our spirits. But it's when you step into the ultimate purpose for your life, that place of risk, when it becomes the natural territory where you're like, hey, I haven't felt afraid in a a moment. I haven't felt fear of of stepping out and, and risking. Then I'm not in my normal zone. I'm not in a natural place. I need to be in that place of the unknown. I need to be in the place where God is on, in control, where God is in control of the moment. God's in control of the outcome. And that's the place where he's calling us to be. So why don't we take risk? Why don't we take risk? Matthew chapter 16, turn with me there. I think we find some really uh, good answers to our questions, but Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Verse 24 says, Then Jesus says to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. You see, change makers get caught up in the reality that there is no life outside of risk. Jesus called his disciples to a life of denial a life of denying themselves. Man, I I ask you, when's the last time you denied yourself something so that you could gain what he has for you? Fasting is the biggest secret, the biggest secret and the biggest um, easy, quick button to gaining the fire of God and the desire for him. Man, if you want to really get hungry for him, I encourage you, take a fast. Fast food, fast something in your life. If your diet doesn't um, allow you to fast food, then fast something, fast technology, and take that time to seek God. I promise you, when you start to deny your flesh, your spirit man becomes strengthened. Your spirit man becomes hungry. Your spirit man says, I'm taking over now. I'm taking over the fleshly desires. And Jesus was calling his disciples and he calls us today. He calls us into a life of denial of saying, no, I'm not gonna stay in the comfort. I'm not gonna stay safe. I'm not gonna get to the end of my life and say, Jesus, you know, I made it. I made it to church on Sundays. I mean, I I, I read my Bible here and there. I prayed, I was a good person. I did all these things, whatever. No, no, to get to heaven, we need to, as change makers, say, Lord, we did everything. We denied ourselves. We were always in a place of risk always in a place of saying, what next? Always in a place of saying, how do we lay down our self right now so that we can serve? Because that's where the reward comes. That's where we reap the harvest and reward of Christ. That's the fullness of Christ. It comes down to what world are you living for? What world are you living for? What world? 
What eternity what are you totally obsessed with? Because it's that eternity that will drive all your actions. It's that eternity that will drive all your risk. And we take a lot of risk in life. You know, we take a lot of risk by uh, working and putting our trust into the economy and, and coming together in gatherings. And even in times of pandemics, we're taking risks. But it's in those risks that we get the value of what we've risked. And when you risk for eternity, you get the value of what's in eternity. When you settle for the temporary, you only get things that cause you to die, to die. Isn't it better to die to ourselves so that we live in Christ? Think of the story of Esther. And Esther is one that faced one of the greatest trials, I think, on the Jewish population, where the king had this plan that he was going to annihilate um, the entire Jewish population off the face of the earth. And Esther, a young girl who found herself in the king's palace, found herself as one of the women coming in and understood that she had a calling on her life. She had a mark on her, that she was called to save the children of God. Now, the only problem was the king, everybody that came into the king's territory without being summoned was killed on spot. And if the king didn't approve of you being there, you were done. So I had a choice. Does she take the risk in order to gain what God was calling her to do? And I ask you the same question today. Maybe you find yourself in a place where God is calling you higher. He's elevating your calling. He's elevating your awareness. And even today as we're talking, the Holy Spirit's just inspiring your spirit. I mean, he's just taken to a new level of saying, what am I doing? What am I doing with the call of God in my life? What is he drawing me to be broken for? And I have to ask you the question, you know, why has he brought you to this church? Why has he brought you to change? What are you doing here? There's a reason you're here. There's a specific destiny on your life. And when you really lean into God and say, God, why did you bring me here? Why did you bring me a part of this community? Then you can step into the reason you're alive, the purpose on your life. And what is your purpose? We as a church, we're taking ground. We're taking ground for Jesus, but it's the risk. It's you stepping out and saying, how can I be a part of what God is doing? How can I move this thing forward? Hey, maybe for you right now, it's coming and serving on the weekends. Maybe it's coming to feed, and maybe it's coming to serve those that are in need. Maybe that's your calling right now. Maybe God is calling you to a space where to use your gifts. Maybe you're creative, and God wants to use your talent to further the word, to bring those that don't know God into salvation through a creative outlet. Maybe God is calling you to do that. Maybe God is calling you into a place where you are to work with the kids and pour and invest in the future, to invest in those that will shake the nations, to be a part of our amazing, dedicated, changed kids team that are rocking the next generation for Jesus Christ. Whatever it is, you must lean in and say, God, what is my part? What are you calling me to risk? That as a change maker, I am making a difference. Hey, I'm calling you today to lean in. And Sean's about to come and lead us in a time of worship. But I wanna draw you to come to a place and we're gonna just open up this altar to be a space where it's all in. It's the cultivating, it's the decision-making time for you to say, God, I'm in. I wanna be a part of what you want to do on earth. And I'm a part of this church. I'm a, I find myself here in the change community. All right, God, what does that mean? What do you want me to step in and do? How do you want me to get my hands dirty? How do you want me to step into risk, to be a part of changing this city for Jesus? Hey, I wanna pray for us as we go into this time of worship that God would open our hearts to be in the place of total awareness and obedience to his calling. Would you pray with me right now? God, I thank you so much for everybody in this room. I pray for an outpouring of your spirit right now, that God, you would invest in every heart, that you would awaken us to the risk you want us to take. God, that today would be a major day of cultivation. God, that we would come into a place where we would make that decision to say yes 
to the king, that we would be the change makers, to take risks, to dream big, to come into the God-sized calling on our lives. And right now, I just pray for everyone in this room, you would draw them in, and that as we worship right now, that you would call them to a higher calling, call them to a higher purpose, and let them make that decision today to follow you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, amen.